Hello everyone, my name is Oops I Deft and today we're gonna take a tour and get familiar with the Godot 4 editor. Let's get started. Okay, so if you haven't installed Godot 4, don't worry, I got your back. We're going to do it right now. Head on over to the Godot 4 downloads page. You can find the link in the description box below or just go to godotengine.org slash download and download the latest stable release for you. For me, it is Godot Engine version 4.0.1, but by the time you're viewing this, this version might change. So don't be startled by this. Just download the latest stable version that is available to you. This version on top here comes with GD script support built in, but if you plan on making your games with C sharp, you will have to download the go.engine.net version because it has integrated C sharp support. For my tutorials and this tutorial going forward, I don't use C sharp, so I will download the normal GD script version above. Once that's finished downloading, head on over to your downloads folder and extract your Godot folder. You can just double click on this application file and it will launch the engine. So make sure you put this application's file in a place where you'll remember it. I usually just drag it onto my desktop or my documents where I know I'll find it later on so that I can obviously use it. But if you're feeling crazy, you can just leave it in the downloads folder. Once it's loaded, you will be greeted by the project manager window where you can load and create new game projects. As you can see, I already have previous game projects loaded here and that's why it's showing up, but yours will be empty if this is your first time using Godot. You can load new projects by importing them, adding new ones and saving the project, or scanning whole directories for them, which is neat because now you don't have to import singular projects. You can just scan a whole folder full of like say five projects and mass add them to your window. You'll see on top here that there is also an asset library projects window. And this is where you'll find Godot assets, projects, or templates made for Godot by community members. It's kind of like the Unreal Engine asset store or the Unity asset store, but the difference is all of these are free. So you can download and add them to your game projects for free. To create a new project, just click on new project, give your project a name, I'm going to call mine test game and create a folder for it. Remember to select your project path because this is where your project will be saved. So ensure that it's in a folder where you know it will be organized and you'll be able to find it. Otherwise, it'll just select a random location like underneath documents. You'll also see that there is new rendering options when it comes to Godot 4. There is forward plus mode, which is for more upscaled game projects that are more graphics and rendering intensive. Then there is mobile mode, which is generally used for mobile games. And finally, compatibility mode, which uses the same renderer as Godot 3, meaning the graphics and rendering quality is lower, making it more suitable for older versions or more low spec devices. My graphics card has compatibility issues with the Vulkan version supported with Godot 4, so I need to choose compatibility mode to run my projects. It's not a deal breaker though, it still runs like a dream. Once you've clicked create and edit, your project will load and you will be greeted by the project window. On top, we have different workspaces. The 3D workspace will always be loaded first by default. Let's get into these workspaces a little bit more. The 2D workspace is used to edit and view 2D scenes for 2D games. The 3D workspace is used to edit and view 3D scenes for 3D games. The script workspace is the code editor where we write, edit, and view scripts. Once we actually have scripts in our project, it'll show up in this panel here or just in our file system panel. And then finally, we have the asset lib workspace, which is the library of assets that you can use in your projects for free. We saw this in the beginning in the projects manager window. On our left side, we have our scene doc. This lists the contents of the current scene that you have open. It is in this panel where we will add new nodes or instance other scenes, basically create our game window. 
Next to it, we have the import dock or import panel. This is where you can set or edit the properties of assets such as images, fonts, or audio files that you have imported or dragged into your project's folder. Let's take this icon.svg as an example. We can see here in the imports panel that we can change certain properties and then re-import it with those saved properties. Below the scene and import doc, you have the file system panel where you'll manage your project files, folders, and assets. You can always drag in new assets here or just add new folders, new scenes, scripts, and many more. If you have a node selected, you'll see on the right side that the inspector panel shows values. This is where you can view and edit the properties of the currently selected nodes, such as, for example, their transform values, their visibility, etc. In the nodes panel, you can hook up signals or groups to your selected node. I go a little bit more in detail into what signals and groups are in another video. Then we have the history panel, which shows us the history of steps that we've taken since we've launched the editor. At the bottom of the editor, there is the output panel, the debugger console, the audio editor, and the animation and shader editor. The output console will return printed messages or a history of steps that you've taken, just like the history panel above. The debugger console is used for, you guessed it, debugging and error handling. So when you're running your script or you're running your project, you will see any bugs or errors pop up here and you can then take the right amount of steps to fix those bugs and errors or you can just monitor your computer stats. The audio mixer is used to edit audio files. The animation panel is used to add animations to the animation player. Once you actually have the animation player node in your game, you can then add and manage your animations. You'll also see a bunch of new options show up if you add different types of nodes. For example, if we add a tile map node to our scene and we create a new tile set, we will see two new options pop up. So just always keep an eye on that. You can manage your scene underneath the scenes bar. Here you can add or save or open scenes quickly and easily. In your projects tab, you can manage your project settings and properties. You can also export your project once you are done with your game or you can quit your project. In the debug bar, you can enable or disable tools that are useful for debugging. For example, you can enable visible collisions or navigations to see if collision or navigation events are executing during gameplay. The editor bar allows you to change settings related to your editor. For example, you can change its layout or theme. The help bar gives you quick access to the Godot for documentation and the community forum, or you can report bugs and suggest new features. Before we wrap up this video, there's one last thing I need to show you, and that is that you can change the mode that you've previously selected, as well as run, stop, or pause your scene or your game. I hope this video helped you get a basic feel of the Godot editor. I recommend that you go play around and experiment with the editor to get familiar with it and also explore all of the features that it has to offer because it has so many to offer. Also, let me know if you found out something that I might not know about or that I skipped over. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like. Until next time, bye!